everybody. Welcome to Squad Pod Sports, where we bring you our thoughts on the latest games and news around the sports world. We have a really big episode this week. Special guest is host of the Locked On Raiders podcast, ESPN Central Texas, Raider Nation Radio 920. And you can also find him on Twitter at your boy Q254. Uh, special guest, uh, your boy Q, man. Uh, thank you for being on. We, we really appreciate it, man. Yeah, no problem, man. I got tired just listening to all those da- damn jobs I got, man. I got, I got tired. <laughs> you're busy. You've been a busy guy. Yeah, I was like, man, I did all that, huh? Damn, I did. But yeah, man, it's, it's, it's all good, man. I appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, no absolutely. Problem. Appreciate uh, the time, you know. Yeah, it, absolutely. And any any time given is appreciated, yo. We, we really do. <laughs> absolutely. No, it's all good, man. It's all good. Uh, so you have been doing this for quite a while, man. So why don't you kind of give us a rundown of like how you got started and uh, what your latest projects have been? Well, it's funny, man, how I got started. I've always had a radio background going back to 99, just uh, a music background. And uh, I've always been a Raider fan. And so uh, what happened is uh, when the Raiders were really good and they went to the Super Bowl and obviously they ended up losing to Tampa Bay and John Gruden, uh, there, there was nobody. And I was from California at the time. I was living in Cali. Nobody was talking about the Raiders and I and I would watch Sports Center and ESPN and I'm like why is this team so damn good but yet nobody's talking about them so it just it used to bother me man it used to drive me crazy so I'd always tell the homeboys like hey man if I ever get a chance to do something and, and be on some you know some kind of outlet or if I have an opportunity to represent I'm going to talk about the Raiders even though nobody else is and everyone's just like, ah yeah whatever anyway fast forward uh, I got an opportunity to be on ESPN Central Texas after I moved to Texas and uh, I, it was cool and, you know, in Texas, we're talking Cowboys, we're talking Texans, we're talking, you know, the Mavericks, we're talking Spurs, we're talking Rockets. You know, we're not talking about the Raiders at that time, yeah. Oakland Raiders. But uh, I said I was going to represent, so I did. You know, anytime I had an opportunity to throw the Raiders into the conversation, I would do it. And uh, it was always funny because, you know, now everyone knows me like, hey, that's Q. You know, he's, he's a big time Raider fan, but, but he'll tell it how it is. You know, be real about it. See, that's the difference. It's like it's one thing to fan out and it's another thing just to be honest about it, but still still give a breakdown uh, of your team. And so so that's that's kind of what I started doing. And then I had a dude named James Arcelana uh, from Oakland, California, who just happened to hit me up on Twitter or kind of reached out on Twitter in general and just said, hey, you know, is anyone uh, out there kind of want to do a, a Raider podcast? I'm thinking about getting into it. And so right then to me, it clicked. I was like, oh, boom, like, I can absolutely. do that. So, yeah, yeah. So I was like, there it is. And I had never done a podcast before. So I said, well, let me jump on with James. And so we did it and it was, you know, it got the it got the ball rolling and it was it was good. And we still do it to this day, uh, only like once a week or sometimes we, you know, we'll skip a week or so. But, uh, you know, it's it's never made any money or anything. It's just been one of those things we did as as fans of the team, but honest fans of the team. And so that's, exactly. you know, that went from Black, uh, Black Hole Banner podcast to Locked On Raiders podcast to Silver and Black Today to Raider Nation Radio 920 to, I mean, on Sunday I was in Las Vegas in Allegiant Stadium covering the Chiefs and Raiders games. Like, wow. You yeah, you know what I mean? So it's it's wild, man. So, uh, you know, we were talking before the show started. If if you if you grind it and you believe in it, man, you can do it. So uh, if anyone's Absolutely. living proof, that's me, man. So keep on, keep keep the hustle going, keep the grind going. Absolutely, yeah, man, that, man, that story is really great. Like you, you did everything right. It sounds like you found the, the, the perfect idea, like for the market, like nobody talking about the Raiders, you know, you, it seemed like you kind of went about everything the right way because I mean, it seems like Raiders fans as a whole aren't really like the most outspoken of fan bases. Like you don't really see Raiders fans all the time. Like I only know one Raiders fan and that's, and that's Vern's dad. Right. <laughs> so, but, I mean, but he's devoted. He's been a Raiders yeah, fan since I was, since I was Hardcore, born. You know? Yeah. No matter what, yeah, every exactly. year. So I yeah, mean, that's it's, it's thing, great man. you tapped into that market. Yeah, I mean that's the thing though. Raider fans are are so loyal to their team through thick and thin, and there's so many generations of Raider fans that have never seen them win. I mean, you know, you think about it. Honestly, me, man, I'm 44 years old, and the last time they won a Super Bowl, it was '83. I was seven. You know what I mean? So right, it's yeah. like, how invested was I at seven years old? I couldn't even <laughs> lie to you and say that oh, I was locked in and that that was you know my favorite team. Like I was just. I was trying to figure out where I was going to get my next, uh, you know, snack from or whatever. <laughs> I wasn't worried about them. So it's, it's, but it's the crazy thing is that there, there is Raider fans everywhere. You know, it's one of the, the largest fan bases. They're worldwide, you know, so I find them in Texas. I find them in Vegas. I find them in the Bay. I, find, I mean, I just find them everywhere. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, it's great, man. It's, 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 it's awesome. And then I've seen, and this is just me from a guy who does these shows on the daily. I've seen it grow to the point where, 
so many people have a podcast out now about the Raiders. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, is that competition for you? And I'm like, no, nah, man, I don't care, man. Like, we all have our own angles. We all do our own thing. And the right. more, the better, man. Because this, again, yeah. the, going back to the original reason why I ever did it to begin with, there was no coverage of the team. So now there's extra coverage, extra coverage, and there's more coverage. And there's people that are doing podcasts all over the place. And so uh, it's great, man. I love, I just love seeing it grow and feeling like I was like a part of that thing. So it's yeah, awesome. That's- that's mm-hmm. awesome. You're kind of at the for- forefront of yeah. like the, the Raiders movement. Right. Um, and, and to add on to what you're saying, like my, my situation is kind of the reverse of yours where you were saying you watched the, the Raiders win the Super Bowl at seven. I, I grew up in a Philly fan. So, I mean, I've, I've seen us at the, in the Super Bowl and I, unfortunately I've never, a couple years ago was the first time we won, of course, but I mean, <laughs> I recently got to see the Super Bowl and, you know, my whole life, I, we were there against the Pats before, you know, but I mean, who knows how long it's going to be until we're there again. So, I mean, <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, so it's kind of right, the opposite right. of your situation, but I mean, that's awesome, man. That's, that's kind of great that you're at the forefront of that Raiders movement. Um, we'll we'll kind of talk about Raiders here a little bit with you. Um, how do you feel about Derek Carr as like your franchise QB going forward? Well, I think he's been a guy that everyone questioned for multiple years, especially after John Gruden came back in 2018, everyone thought, oh, he's not going to be the guy. He's not going to get along with Gruden. He's not going to be able to handle the way that Gruden treats him or talks to him or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think that there was some question. I think there was some validity, validity to that for a quick second. But this year, man, if you see what Derek Carr is really doing this year, not only with his arm, but his, his, his brain, man, his understanding of the offense, his understanding of what to do with the line of scrimmage, uh, that's the kind of the nuts and bolts that I really look at and really just say, okay, this dude gets it. I mean, he'll get to the line of scrimmage and he'll he'll call out the tight end's name and say, hey, hey, you know, come to me, come to me. You know, meaning basically <laughs> I need you yeah. to, uh, you know, come, come in motion short and, and fast. And, and uh, you know, he just he's calling out everything. So he totally understands John Gruden's offense. Uh, as far as his play, man, he's using his legs, which is something I've been begging him to do for years. He's athletic enough to do it. He's not Lamar Jackson. He's not going to run around the field and just, you know, tear you up like Kyler Murray or any of those cats. But he's mobile enough. He's athletic enough to pick up a, a third and three. If, he, if there's no wide receiver there, he can run and pick it up. Third and five, exactly. he can run and pick it up. And, and you have to be able to do that. If you can't do that, man, you're, you're a sitting duck and you're, you're basically a target practice. And so that's what he was for a couple of years after he broke his ankle in 2016. And so now all of a sudden it's, it's confidence, it's understanding. And he knows that he has the, the, you know, the back of John Gruden. John Gruden's got his back. So I, I absolutely believe that Derek Carr is the franchise guy. No doubt about it. He's playing some of the best ball of his life right now. Yeah, and uh, the Raiders and and their fan base, man, they're they're excited about what he's doing and, and the movement that he's making and the direction he's taking the team. So yeah, Derek Carr is definitely the guy, no doubt about it. Yeah, it's it seemed like this is the perfect time for him to be doing what he's doing, you know? Because I mean, over the past couple of years, there was always the question of like, what is Derek Carr's ceiling? Like, you haven't really seen like, have we seen what he the best of what he could do? And right. of course, of what you're saying is like the past year or so, there was a lot of like. You know how the media is. They were saying there's a lot of tension between him and Gruden. Maybe yeah, they didn't get along. Right. They brought Mariota in. They weren't really sure on what was going to happen. There was a lot of rumors about, like, oh, Derek Carr is only the guy as of right now. But, I mean, from what you're saying like, and what we're seeing on the field, he's he's playing amazing football right now. Um, and we've talked about on the podcast before how the Raiders are just, like, so quietly good right now. Nobody's talking about him, and it's of course like, <laughs> like, nobody's talking about him. Just they're, like they're talking point. about him now. They're yeah, about yeah. Him. I mean, they didn't yeah. win that game, and there's no moral victories on Sunday. But they they uh, they took the Chiefs to Super Bowl champs to the wire on national mm-hmm. TV. Yeah, and Sunday I mean they beat them earlier this year too. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, they're they're being talked about now because uh, yeah, they're opening some eyes, quick, fast, and in a hurry. Yeah. And I was wondering too, like if you see that result of that game now, you're one and one with the Chiefs being their only loss on the season. You see them in the playoffs as a seventh seed, and they're a two because Pittsburgh gets the one. That's yep. that's another first round matchup. That would be I would love to see round three. Uh, see who comes out of that game. It could be a great upset in the first round where the Raiders squeak through, and then next thing you know, you're matched up with Pittsburgh. I, I could see them winning that game as well. Yeah, I could see you know? the Raiders beating Pittsburgh. Next well, thing you know, you know, I'll just... About it, the thing about it is the Raiders' offense is not one that any team really wants to play, and I'm not saying exactly. that as a, you know, like a disrespectful way to any other team, but the way that they score points and the way that they conduct their offense is something that 
uh, is really good for the playoff run. You know, you're, you're, you mm-hmm. grind it out on the ground. You got that heavy run game with Josh Jacobs. You got it with Devontae Booker. You got that offensive line that blocks downhill. You got, you know, guys, that, that works in any kind of weather. It doesn't matter if it's cold in Pittsburgh, cold right. in Kansas City, cold in Cleveland. That travels. And then you got, you know, Derek Carr, who's a surgeon right now. So he's able to make the passes <laughs> that he needs to. And he has he has weapons around him. So right now, I mean, w- without sounding, you know, cocky or, or too ahead of myself, the the offense is really one that that teams don't really want to deal with right now. Now the defense, that's a whole nother story. But the, yeah. offense, the offense is 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 right up there with the best of them in the league right now. Right, yeah. right. I completely and, uh, agree. And to kind of talk about like going off of what you're saying about the offense, um, you guys got a lot of decent players, like you're saying. You, um, I just kind of wanted to know your thoughts on like Henry Ruggs and Josh Jacobs, and even, like, the, the acquisition of El Nelson Aguilar, who's turned out to be kind of a bright spot on the year. team this year uh, for you guys. No, he's, been a, he's been a great spot on the team, and I thought he wasn't even a guy who was going to make it out of training camp. When they signed yeah. him, I thought he was just a training camp body. I saw how he left uh, Philadelphia, how they, they weren't happy with his drops that he had. And uh, yeah. Eagle fans, man, Eagle fans, well, you know, just ripped the hell out of him. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and deservingly so, but he's he <laughs> found a new life in, in, uh, in, L, in Las Vegas, and and Derek Carr really trusts him, man. He goes to him all the time. Yeah, it, it certainly you seems know? like it. Yeah, so he, he trusts them. They got a good chemistry uh, going along with each other. Henry Ruggs is a guy that I think because Nelson's playing so well that Henry Ruggs is kind of coming along a little slower than, than expected because he's expected to be that speedster. He's expected yeah. to stretch the field and everything. But Nelson Aguilar got like six six or seven touchdowns on the season for the Raiders right now. He leads the team. Yeah. But, him in. You know what I mean? So it's like. Well, okay, I guess you got this uh, hot shot young dude, but you might as well roll with Nelly while no, Nelly's getting it done. <laughs> and so, yeah. and that's, you know, and I knew when they caught, when they had a nickname for him, I was like, wait a minute, they're serious about this guy. They got a, <laughs> yeah. they got a nickname for that's him. You don't you get know. a nickname if you're a bum, you know, unless, <laughs> yeah. and, unless that's your nickname, bum, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty interesting, man, but they, they definitely got a nice chemistry between Carr and, and Nelson Aguilar. And uh, the rest of the offense, man, they, they're just really good weapons. Ruggs, Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro. Uh, I mentioned Josh Jacobs and Devontae Booker, that offensive line. I mean, it all yeah. starts in the trenches, man. If you have time to, to throw the ball and you have uh, open lanes to run the ball, you have an opportunity to win games. And that's what the Raiders are doing right now. Yeah. Right. I, I, I mean, I definitely predicted before, like, whenever Aguilar we re- was released, I, I definitely predicted him going somewhere else and thriving. I, I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> um, I remember talking to Vernon about it before. He's like, I kn- no matter where he goes, I know they're gonna he's gonna they're gonna get the most out of him. I just think it was like what you're saying. I think it was the the Philly fans and a lot of the pressure kind of beaten down on him week after week. You know, I think it was a little too much to handle at at that point. Um, I mean, yeah, because Philly's rough for for players. If you don't have right. thick skin, you're not gonna make it in Philly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you, you can go ahead, Vern. You got another question. Yeah, I was just um, wondering. I know you you cover a lot of Dallas, uh, or or at least uh, used to, as far as like being in Texas. What do you think about this? Is kind of getting out of the AFC there. What do you think about the NFC East? Who wins that division? This yeah, that is out there. But... That division stinks. <laughs> it does. It that really does. It's terrible, man. That's an awful division. Uh, I picked Philly to win it early in the season, but they're um, they're not very good. You know, no. I mean, they're clearly not no. very good. They got questions at quarterback, and and on top of that, uh, they got a quarterback that's making a whole lot of money that you're questioning right now. So Carson Wentz is a, is a question. Jalen Hurts is not the guy right now. I don't no. know if he's going to be the guy. He's not ready to be the dude. Um, there's a lot of injuries in Philly. I I don't know what the hell's going on with Philadelphia. Washington <laughs> is is a mess. I mean, they, they have mm. a good defensive front, but they have an absolute mess the, the rest of the way. I just like the fact that Alex Smith is playing because we all know what he came back from. So yeah. He's playing great. You know, We've been talking yeah, about so that here, yeah. That's So that's really cool. He'll be comeback player of the year. I like that. Uh, and then there's the Cowboys, and you have no que- you have no idea what, what Cowboy team you're going to see week to week. You know, one week it's like, yeah. okay, they're playing really good. Next week they stink. They're awful. Obviously, when Dak Prescott went down, that was major, but uh, they, they just, they're just not a very good team either. So whatever team wins the NFC East is actually going to host a playoff game, which is a joke, but they're going to host yeah. a crazy game. to me. I and, agree. And then they're going to get, they're going to be one and done. So, I mean, it's just as simple as that. I don't see yeah, anybody right. in the NFC East making a run in the playoffs. I just don't. Just, yeah. I was curious um, because of like your, your Cowboys background, like what you thought, um, especially them coming off that win. Um, like I, I know CD lamb is probably my, my, 
favorite part about that team right now, just yeah. because he's he's so athletic. Like seeing him make that that yeah, turning that catch, like catch. it was amazing yeah. to see. And like I'm I'm really I I don't really have any affiliation with the Cowboys, but I, I'm just like really hoping to see him turn into something great. I like I like his style. You know, the same with all these rookie wide receivers. So I like to keep an eye on them. You know. Yeah, yeah um, no, he, he's a stud, man. He's an absolute stud. He was actually he was a guy that I, I had no idea what the Raiders were going to do in the draft. I knew that they needed mm-hmm. a, a a number one wide receiver, and I I thought that C.D. Lamb was going to be the guy they picked at number twelve. They had an option at C.D. Lamb, Jerry Judy, or Henry Ruggs. They went with the speedster, and well, uh, C.D. Lamb is just balling out of control. And you know, I get yeah. it. Henry Henry Ruggs' speed is, is is special, man. You can't teach that speed. But uh, man, I, I'll tell you, uh, I know a lot of Raider fans are thinking. How come Henry Ruggs ain't getting the targets that CeeDee Lamb's getting? How come he's not doing the production that CeeDee <laughs> yeah. Lamb's having? CeeDee Lamb was a fun player at Oklahoma, and he's a real fun player with the Cowboys. Man, he's a bright spot to the point, and this is just me spitballing, but this is to the point of where I think that Amari Cooper might be expendable this offseason. I think that they might try to make a move mm. and, and Unload trade that him contract. somewhere. You know, yeah, move that contract uh, and, and move him. And then pay back. His, his exactly his production is not not what it should be when they need it. I mean, it's it's great week one and week two when they're playing in Jerry's world, but you know week yeah. fifteen when they're playing in Philly in the cold, he's not that guy. He he shrivels up. He's just not the dude. And so yeah. I think they probably are going to have a little buyer's remorse with that contract. And now that CD Lamb's playing so good, and they got Michael Gallup as well, I, right. I don't think they need to hold on to Coop. I think that they could use him for trade bait and uh, and try to make sure that they solidify that contract for Dak next uh, this off season. And, and then just going into the draft to work on some other pieces for that offense. But I mean, they got guys that can score. They don't need. They don't really need Amari Cooper out there. So I just think this is me personally. I think that the he's gonna very be good point. It does make a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, I mean, as far as the NFC East goes, I, of course, I had Philly a couple weeks ago winning it. But I mean, as of right now, I think the most complete team. I know they're all have three wins, but I think the most complete team as of right now is the Giants. It seems like they kind of have everything figured out in a way. It seems like they've had some momentum on their side here going into that bye week this past week. Um, I mean, it, it hurt me even putting an Eagles jersey on today, let alone I had to put a Cunningham jersey on, not a, a current jersey. Um, <laughs> as far <laughs> I, I couldn't put, put myself through putting on a current jersey. You know, it's, it's embarrassing at this point. Um, but, I mean, as far as going back to the Raiders, uh, is there anything – I uh, with Gruden. Is there anything that you've really liked out of him since he came to Las Looks Vegas? Like and is there anything three, really that you dislike that he's done the past couple years? Um, I mean, I don't think anyone was a fan of him trading Khalil Mack. Uh, right. Yeah, definitely we got obviously, some back for that. I think we obviously get it. And if you look at what the Raiders were able to get from the trade of Khalil Mack with the draft picks, getting to Josh Jacobs, getting to Jonathan Abram, getting to Damon Oof. Arnett. Free and exactly. up a lot of cap space. You know, I mean, they, they look, like, it's one of those things that you don't like to make those tough decisions, but he came in and he had a plan. He said, hey, I'm going to tear this thing all the way down to the nuts and bolts. And as a, as a fan, not as a, as a guy covering the team, but as a fan, I'm thinking, man, the team is closer than that. You don't really need to tear them all the way down. You just need to make some tweaks here and there. But he felt like they needed to tear the team all the way down. So he did that. And, you know, it is what it is. But uh, you see now you, the young guys, the hungry guys on the squad, the guys that are still on rookie contracts, and you see it's all starting to pay off. So now right. you start to see the big picture. You're like, okay, I get what he was doing, even though, again, yeah. a lot of people don't like it, but it's just it is what it is. Uh, I think one of the best things he did, though, was uh, also hire Mike Mayock, you know, bring him away from NFL Network and uh, bring him in as their general manager. And, and I, I just think that Mike Mayock is a really good talent evaluator. Uh, obviously, everyone who's ever watched the NFL and cares about the draft has seen him on NFL Network talk about these players. And no GM's going to hit 100% all the time. I mean, it's just not possible. But, yeah. Yeah. you know, to have a guy that you know has a good idea of what he's looking for, that's 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 good. And then to know that John Gruden never had a real good uh, history when it came to uh, drafting players. He just never had a really good track record. So I think that they balance each other out really well. You know, he respects Mayock. Mayock respects him. But they could challenge each other. You know, if, if, right. if Mayock sees just something works. Gruden's doing, he can say, hey, man, that's not right. And Gruden will challenge him back, and they'll go back and forth. Whereas when Reggie McKenzie was a GM, John Gruden's like, Psh, you ain't nobody. That The end-all, be-all, you know, <laughs> with me. It's, it's what I say, and so that's all that really matters. So More you know, of that, a mutual pretty, respect. Yeah, you know. exactly, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, but I'm, I mean, just to be honest, I'm a, I'm a big John Gruden fan anyway. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I always I always wanted him to return to the sidelines for the Raiders. So when they, he came back in 2018, I was thrilled. And, and now it's starting to pay off. A lot of people kind of questioned it and laughed at it. 
oh, he's got a 10-year, $100 million contract, <laughs> you know, whatever. But now you're starting to see what exactly he brings to the table. Uh, he yeah. cares about, you know, every, everyone can't be, that's the other thing, everyone can't be a Raiders head coach. It's, it's something different. You're cut yeah. from a different cloth. It's not, you just can't go in and, and be on the sidelines for the Raiders. You, you got to have a special bond uh, with the team. You got to know about gets the team it. history. Yeah, you got to just, you got to be a different dude. And that's exactly mm-hmm. who John Gruden is. He's just, he's just cut differently. So I can definitely yeah. respect that. Yeah, I mean, as far as that 10-year deal, it, it whenever they announced that, it seemed to me like he kind of went to him and they gave he gave him a plan of like, this is what I'm going to do. Right. This is all the steps that it's going to take. And they gave him like, all right, here's 10 years that like, if you think that you can build a championship team within that time, go at, have at it. And I mean, the first, He's working like what on you're it. saying, everybody was kind of skeptical of the, of the Khalil Mack trade and like you could try to get Amari Cooper. Right. Um and it's like you gotta break a couple eggs and make an omelet, man. You gotta, <laughs> you yeah. gotta, it's like you gotta build a nice team around. Like you gotta get some draft picks and, and kind of right. move forward with that. But I mean, it seems like even over the past couple of years, he's built quite, quite the team. I mean, what you said, the defense is a little shaky here and there. But I mean, that's not that's something you can definitely add on to over the next year or so. That'll make right. you guys even better if you can hold that offense to the way it is going forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think they're heading in the right direction. I think that they showed that Sunday night on uh, on national TV. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you can hold your own against the Chiefs twice, <laughs> like that, that definitely means something. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> you got anything, Vern? Um, yeah, I mean, um, we don't want to hold you for too, too long here. Um, just had like maybe one, one more question uh, from me. Just what what would be your unbiased Super Bowl prediction going forward here? Sitting here at uh, week twelve, Ooh, what man. would be? What do you think? It is, it is a little early out? still, but it what, is. what you got? But uh, well, I'll just. It, it, it what is, do you think? You, you can see, you can kind of see the movers and shakers. Um, man, uh, that's that's a really good question, especially if you look at the NFC side of things. Like I look at the it's Packers, a, they're a team there, that man. could be in, in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, you know, I look at the, uh, a team in the NFC West. I see Seattle. I think their defense is going to bite them too many times. Definitely. Um, I don't think Arizona's quite ready there. Uh, the Rams mm-hmm. are playing good ball. I mean, you just saw them mm-hmm. on Monday Night Football. They're playing some yeah. really good ball. Uh, that defense, I, I, man. I'm, I guess in the NFC, I would either go. I would probably go – the Saints always find a way to lose. So yeah, I think they, I would they always <laughs> choke some way in the playoffs. Yeah, so I, I think either Green Bay or – I'll say Green Bay or Seattle will get it. No, okay. Green Bay or the Rams. Okay. I'm sorry. Green Bay or the Rams. Green Bay or the Rams. Yeah, will represent in the NFC. Uh, okay. And then the AFC, okay. I, I would have to say, is still – is still. I mean, the Chiefs are still the, the cream of the crop. They're still the best yeah. team in the NFC. I think Baltimore has been figured out. Um, I think, right. yeah, that Pittsburgh – Pittsburgh is really, really good. They're playing some damn good ball. Uh, they're not going to go undefeated, though. They're going to take a loss here and there. Uh, they'd probably rather get it out of the way now than, than get it out of the way in the wrong time in the playoffs. But at some yeah. point, they're going to take a loss. So, um, yeah, I, I would say that the Chiefs and Steelers are probably the best two teams in the AFC. Uh, and then I'd say that in the NFC, it's either the Rams or, or the Packers right now. But it's still Interesting. early. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> it's late November. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Yeah, my only worry about the Packers is just, like, that run defense is just not great at all. Like, teams right. seem like they do their best run game against the Packers. Like, it happened last year in the playoffs. It's already happened this year a couple times. Like, it seems like that's the, like, that's the kryptonite right. <laughs> to the Packers is, like, the run game. Um, so, I mean, and it seems like the Seattle defense is all around bad. So it's not even just yeah. a run game. It's a whole defense. Yep. They can't stop anybody. Yeah. And as far as like Tampa, Tampa Bay, Gronkineers, <laughs> you never know what team you're going to get each week with them. Like one week they're, they're balling. They haven't figured out. And like last, like what we saw last night, Tom Brady's throwing two picks. <laughs> and like, Bruce Arians is throwing them under the bus in the press yeah, throw- conference again. <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. Every, every time they lose, man. Yeah, and I mean, I could kind of say the same with the Rams. I mean, the Rams are like, I don't they're know, up and like, down. They're up um, and down. They're I think like more, a little more consistently up though this season at least. Yeah, yeah. they're but playing I mean, good ball right now. They're playing good yeah, ball right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, they're playing at the right time. time. Yeah, exactly, right time. Mm-hmm. precisely. And I mean, yeah, it seems like there's more of a question mark around the NFC than the AFC at this point. Like, right. who knows? Um, but I mean, it's. It seems like the AFC is like the Chiefs, 
Steelers and possibly Oakland. I mean, not Oakland, Las Vegas. I keep wanting to say <laughs> Oakland. Um, well, they got but, uh, they got to they got to they got to sure up some things. Their run defense, well, their defense in general is not very good right now. I mean, they they got to mm-hmm. get better in that defense if they're going to win in in late December and early January. They got to have a stronger defense. So they have an opportunity. Their offense can run with anybody in the league. That's what I do know. Uh, but it's right. just, it all it all depends on how much can the defense stop. If the defense can come up with some stops, they'll win games. You know, honestly, they should have won that game Sunday night. They came up short. Their defense allowed a Patrick Mahomes, who's a great quarterback, but to get down the field, you know, and and, and score a touchdown when you can't give up a touchdown in that situation. So yeah. championship teams, championship teams find ways to close the door, and they didn't find a way to close the door on Sunday night, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. that's true. Yeah, man. Um, before we let you go, I got just got one little question for you. It's not really like football related. I just uh, want to know if you have any advice to any uh, smaller podcasters or any kind of people trying to get into the sports world of, of like broadcasting <laughs> or reporting, like us in a way. Um, if you have yeah. any advice to to kind of give to anybody. Yeah, man. You're never a smaller podcast, man. You're not. You know, don't ever go into it like you're a smaller podcast. Go into it like you can hold your own with anybody. And, and, and all you have to do is just continue to grind and continue to work. And when tell, someone tells you that you can't, you tell them that you can and you show them that you can. And don't worry about it. Keep your head down and keep busting your tail and you'll be just fine. And, uh, you know, all you got to do, and this is the thing, put your all into every single show because it could be that one throwaway show that you do that someone who can change your life listens to. So, right, right. you know, if That's you're going to put your... You know what I'm saying? If you're going to put your name or you're going to put some, your voice on something, make sure you, you come in with, you know, with your guns blazing. Because, again, I mean, like, someone could listen to this podcast and be like, I don't know why Q wasn't on his A game or something, you know, and and <laughs> and that wouldn't be right to you guys. And it wouldn't be it would be me disrespecting my own name. So if I'm going to jump on and, and be on anyone's show or if I'm going to put some work out, it's going to be my best at all times. Uh, because I never know who's going to listen. And, and that's, I, I mean, I could go on for hours about how many how many blessings I've got since uh, doing these podcasts. It's just, it's unbelievable. So just put your all into it every day and uh, it'll, it'll be rewarded at some point. So there you go. Absolutely, that's, man. That's great, man. Um, really appreciate that. Like, yeah, man. It, it, just because like we we really want to do this. This is more like, we, we talk all the time off camera, obviously about like, Imagine doing this as a job, waking up every morning and doing this. Like, that is the goal, you know what yeah. I mean? And so, like, it, it's just, and, and uh, people like you, like, are really inspiring, you know, because I, yeah. I know, like, like you were saying about your whole, like, since since the '90s, man, like you've been just working and working and working, and like you said, it's like you got tired listening to all the different jobs listed there. Like, that yeah. that's inspiring. It's motivating. I just appreciate you even giving us the time of day, man. Yeah, oh, man, no, no, we no, really man. appreciate it. Absolutely. I appreciate you reaching out. I'm glad we were able to make this work, man. No problem, man. Um, Hopefully we can have you on again sometime because it it was a really good conversation with you, man. Okay. You you let me know, man. I got your back. I'm here. Definitely, man. Thank you Uh, very much. Definitely special thanks to your boy Q. Uh, Check him out on Locked On Raiders podcast, ESPN Central Texas, Raider Nation Radio 920, and also at your boy Q254 on Twitter. Thank you very much, man. We, We really appreciate it. Absolutely, man. You guys keep keep up doing the the great work, man. I appreciate y'all.